Good evening, this is Linda Saracino, High School Supervisor of Instruction. The following presentation includes the NJGPA Spring 2023 results and the NJSLA Fall Block 2022 results. As you are aware, 2022 marked the first administration of the NJGPA. Consistent with the above law, there was no graduation assessment requirement for any student who graduated with the class of 2023. The graduation assessment requirements for the classes of 2024 and 2025 remain in place and are available for districts on the graduation assessment requirements page. When viewing the data, it is important to keep the following in mind. NJGPA is a snapshot that provides information about a student at one particular time. We are committed to using multiple measures to assess student progress and attainment. As we begin to unpack this data, we will look closely at the level of all students to see what types of changes need to be made to our curriculum, instructional practices, and our tiered system of supports. Section 1, NJGPA Analysis. This data indicates the number of students who tested in ELA and math. In ELA, we had 73% passing, with the state average at 81%. In math, we had 48% passing, with the state average at 55%. Overall, in math and ELA, we had 60% passing, and the state average was 68%. This is the same data, but in bar graph form. Demographic information. This data represents the subgroups. It includes race, total number of students tested, number of students passing and not passing. In ELA, there were 11 Asian students who tested, 82% passed and 18% did not pass. There were 23 black students who tested in ELA with 57% passing and 43% not passing. 60 Hispanic students tested, 67% passed, 33% did not pass. There, one, there were 122 white students who tested in ELA with 55% passing and 45% not passing. In math, 64% of Asian students passed and 36% did not pass. There were 23 black students who took the math assessment with 22% passing and 78% not passing. 60 Hispanic students tested, 40% passed, 60% did not pass. 122 white students took the math assessment, 55% passed, 45% did not pass. Steps to address deficiency include progress monitoring, being utilized in English language arts and mathematics classrooms throughout the link at benchmark data and Big Ideas Common Assessments. Department meetings are also used to analyze student data, identify strengths and areas in need of improvement. This is the same data in bar graph form. This slide represents subgroups by gender, female and male. In ELA, 106 female students tested with 90% of females passing and 10% not passing. There were 122 male students who were assessed in ELA, 58% passed, 42% did not. Combined, 73% of students passed and 27% did not pass. In math, 106 female students tested, 62% passed, 38% did not pass. There were 122 male students assessed in math, 35% passed, 65% did not. Combined male and female, 48% of students passed and 52% did not pass. Again, steps to address deficiencies include progress monitoring through the use of link and benchmark assessments, big ideas, common assessments, and data that is analyzed in department meetings and professional learning communities. This is the same data in bar graph form.
This slide represents the subgroup data by program. Section 504, English language learners, special education, general education, and all students. Students tested in math and ELA. A total of 228 students tested in ELA. 20 students with 504 plans tested. 65% passed, 35% did not pass. 41 students receiving special education services tested. 39% passed, 61% did not pass. There were six English language learner students who tested. 17% passed and 83% did not pass. There were 181 general education students who tested in ELA. 82% passed, 18% did not pass. In math, a total of 228 students tested, 20 students with 504 plans tested, 40% passed, 60% did not pass. There were 41 special education students who tested, 12% passed, 88% did not pass. There were six English language learners who tested, 17% passed, 83% did not pass. 181 general education students tested, 57% passed, 43% did not pass. This is the same data in bar graph form. The next steps are data analysis and reflection. We will continue to evaluate instructional tools, strategies, methods, and interventions implemented and adjust if needed. We will continue to review our curriculum, pacing of the curriculum, and focus on our power standards. Make plans for enrichment and support for all students. We will identify areas needed for professional development. We will continue to drill down data in department meetings and professional learning communities. We will administer LinkIt NJGPA practice assessments in math, English, and science. We will conduct vertical and horizontal articulation. Again, we will use PLCs to analyze data and implement our tiered system of supports. Next, we have our 2022-2023 NJSLA fall block results. In the fall block, 97 students tested in Algebra 1, with 24.7% of students meeting or exceeding expectations. The state average was 23.7%. As you can see, the data is broken down into subgroups. For example, 29.4% of economically disadvantaged students met or exceeded expectations, while 22.2% of non-economically disadvantaged students met or exceeded expectations. In the fall block, 17 students tested in Algebra 2, with 58.8% meeting or exceeding expectations. The state average is 33.9%. Again, the data is broken down into subgroups. For example, 100% of Hispanic, Asian, Black, or African American, and students of two or more races met or exceeded expectations. There were 77 students who tested in English language arts in the fall block with 29.9% of students meeting or exceeding expectations. The state average was 35.9%. Data is also broken down into subgroups. For example, 43.6% of females met or exceeded expectations. 16.2% of male students met or exceeded expectations, and 0% of non-binary students met or exceeded expectations. Our next steps. We will continue to evaluate instructional tools, strategies, methods, and interventions, and adjust if needed. We will continue to plan for enrichment and support for all students. We will continue to identify areas of professional development. We will continue to drill down data, conduct vertical and horizontal articulation meetings, support college and career readiness at the high school. We will continue to offer summer programs, implement the Reader's Writers Workshop, 
and um, our building initiatives. We thank you for your support. Feel free to contact Building Administration and the Curriculum Department with any questions.